All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna be going to structural dynamics again. We're gonna look at free vibration of, of single degree of freedom systems. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to describe a little bit what free vibration is, and in fact, and then formulate and solve an ordinary differential equation for a single degree of freedom system. And we also hope that you'll be able to describe the dynamic properties and look at some of the solution characteristics associated with that single degree of freedom system and the ordinary differential equation that comes out of that. Or hopefully if you're watching this, you already are kind of familiar with, with what a single degree of freedom system is. So the first thing that we want to ask, what is free vibration? So a, a typical single degree of freedom system might look something like this. So I've got this mass and spring system. I'll call this with some stiffness K. And I, I won't include anything that looks like damping in it yet. But. So here's my, my typical or a typical single degree of freedom system. And free vibration would be if I were to pull on this mass. So I extend it a little bit. So I take it, I pull on it. I move it from here to over here. I give it some initial displacement. I'll call this U sub zero, why not, right? I give it some initial displacement and then I let it go and watch it move back and forth, back and forth. And in real life, that thing will eventually come to a stop because there's friction on the wheels and then there's an inherent damping in the system that makes it slow down and stop. Another example of free vibration would be if you've got kids, you know, like I take my kids to the park and here, they, they always want me to give them a push on the swing. So here, if this is my swing system, I'll put them on the swing and I'll give them an initial displacement. I'll pull it and then I'll let it go. And there's no machine or anything. And this thing is just gonna oscillate back and forth, back and forth. And if I never push it again, or if I never introduce another force to it, it's gonna just vibrate freely or oscillate freely, move back and forth until it comes to rest back where it started from, which was probably like right here. And all I'm describing right here is a pendulum. In this single degree of freedom system where we give it an initial velocity. So for instance, if I'm, I give them an initial push also and a displacement, that would be like an initial displacement and velocity. And then I let them oscillate freely until they come to rest. And they would come to rest because of that inherent damping. But, but free vibration just means I'm not putting any more forces on the system as it vibrates. And if there were no damping at all, this thing would just go on and on and on forever. Anyway, that, that's free vibration, okay? So something with initial displacement and velocity, and then you just let it go. And then it moves back and forth, back and forth until it comes to rest because of damping. And if there were no damping, it would keep on going and going and going. Now knowing what free vibration is great, but as engineers, what we really want to do is know if we give it this much initial displacement or this much initial velocity, where will the particle or the mass be at any instant of time? And what does that motion look like moving back and forth so that we can do a bunch of other stuff so we know what the maximum displacement is or how fast it's going. We can even figure out the rate at which it's slowing down or see how damping affects the free vibration or the motion of the system. And then figure out ways to increase damping or, or control where it is when at as a specific time, right? That's what we want to do as engineers. So let's start by looking at undamped free vibration. After reading the definition, you know, they have an example of a child on a swing, but hey, I, I really, I really thought of that on my own because, you know, I push my kids on a swing for real. <laughs> and, and also, you know, I, after reading it, I also thought of a, a like a, a guitar string. If you pluck a string on a violin or, or a guitar and just let it go, that would be free vibration too. What's up? Now the equation of motion is, is always an important thing. And the equation of motion for a single degree of freedom system. And let's say this point right here represents the at rest state. So this is my origin or my equilibrium point. And we'll define motion going towards the right as positive. So I'll call this the motion of the, of the mass as x. And this x or this position is a function of time here. And if I you know, do an equilibrium equation or if I make a cut, draw a free body diagram and do some of the forces in the horizontal, I can come up with an equation of motion which will look like this. And x double dot indicates a second time derivative. So really this is an acceleration, which would be d squared x over dt squared. 
and all the x's or the positions are a function of time. The m is the mass, k is the stiffness or the spring constant. And if you want to put something in free vibration, you have to give it an initial disturbance, right? You got to introduce something or some initial conditions. So those can come in the form of velocity or acceleration. So you could say that for initial displacement at time, t equals zero. I could say that, oh, I'm going to give this thing a pull. So I'm going to move at x sub zero. I'm going to move it a distance. I'll call it x naught. At, at time t equals zero, I give it initial velocity. So I could say x dot at zero. I'm going to give it a push. And this will be, I'll call this x dot of zero. Boom. So this is like the pull and this is the push. What I have here is an ordinary differential equation with some initial conditions, which means I can solve this using my math, my calculus, and get my position as a function of time for this whole thing based on these initial conditions. Hey, given all this, I can find the position as a function of time. I can have a solution for this right here based on this, the differential equation and my initial conditions. That's really powerful stuff. And really in the kinematics idea, what we want is to be able to describe the position, velocity, and acceleration at any instant of time for the particle or the system. Now there's some interesting characteristics associated with this differential equation. So if I re rewrite this and I divide this whole thing through by, by m, and in what they would call standard form, I would have x double dot plus k over m times x is equal to zero. And this k over m here is, is kind of a, a root of the equation. And this thing also has some really imp important properties. There's this thing called the natural or circular frequency, which we're gonna use the Greek letter omega or lowercase omega. Omega sub n is defined as the circular or natural frequency of the system. And here, omega n squared is equal to k over m. So the natural frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. And the units of this natural frequency, these units are radians per second. So some people like to express uh, this this natural frequency in other units as well, like revolutions per second or revolutions per minute, like RPMs on a car or cycles per second. And one cycle is the same as one revolution. One cycle is equal to two pi radians. If I wanted to express this natural frequency in terms of cycles per second, the symbol I would use would be F. This like cursive looking F, just a conversion. If I want to express it in cycles per second, it would be omega n divided by two pi. And this would be in typically the units of this is cycles per second or revolutions per second. In your car, it's revolutions per minute. So you got to convert the seconds into minutes. And that's that's a simple conversion. And then even what's more, it's, oh, I'll go towards the left here. What's more is there's another measure that people like to relate to the natural frequency. And it's called the period, which is the inverse of the frequency. The period is like another way to say, how long does it take to complete one cycle? And this natural period is equal to the inverse of the frequency or two pi over the natural frequency.